Welcome to the fifth episode of a new ongoing series on the channel in which I analyze the musical score from some of the greatest movies, TV shows, and video games. It's here where I discuss how a soundtrack complements its corresponding title along with how it came to be. In this episode, I'll be going over the 80s synthetic score of Stranger Things, composed by Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein. We'll talk about Kyle and Michael's approach to the show's time period, the score's influence, and how nostalgia brings passion from the music. Before we start, if you're new here, consider subscribing to find more soundtrack analysis on other titles in the future. I release weekly analysis videos that you can keep updated with. If you have been here before, good day. With all that said, let's begin. The popular 2016 series Stranger Things has justified its success with excellent writing, fantastic character development, easy binging availability on Netflix, along with an unforgettable score that keeps the viewer on the edge of their seat, the show confides in its music to envision an 80s backdrop. The show's score was composed by Michael Stein and Kyle Dixon, two members of an instrumental electronic quartet named Survive, which formed in 2009. This synthwave experimental band produces horror-themed compositions in homage to dark and ambient film scores that carry a synth melody. With a broad spectrum of electronic beats and tone, Survive's synthetic style has a deeper and stark tone, rather than the music scored by Stein and Dixon in Stranger Things, as it's more subtle and has a direct influence to that time period. The series creators Ross and Matt Duffer approached Survive after reviewing the band's contribution done in the 2014 indie horror film The Guest and appreciated its electronic atmosphere. Before Stranger Things was greenlit, the Duffer brothers were inspired to move the soundtrack into a direction where synthpop overtook its show's genre. Ross and Matt valued Cliff Martinez's score for Drive, an integral part of the film's interesting transformation from contemporary to old-fashioned by simply using electronic pop as the score's theme. The creators believed Survive's music output was exactly what their project needed to reach an emotional connection to their show's setting. They also considered a way to integrate Survive's synthetic score with the 80s commercial music established in the show. The Duffer Brothers used Survive's song Dirge for the pitch trailer of Stranger Things to sell the show to Netflix. After Netflix's approval, the Duffers hired Kyle and Michael before casting calls began. The composers reworked some of Survivor's songs, while creating motifs for many of the show's characters and occurrences. During casting procedure, Matt and Ross used Kyle and Michael's motif demos over the actors' audition tapes to better aid the casting process, as well as to better form the motif to the actors. The Duffer Brothers came to the conclusion that the two composers needed to write their music simultaneously with the show's production. For Stranger Things, Kyle and Michael operates with the same synthesizers used in Survive and addresses the music with references to classic horror scores going from John Carpenter's Halloween to Jerry Goldsmith's Gremlins. This was achieved with Kyle and Michael's enormous analog synthesizer setup, which include a Roland SH-2, ARP Odysseys, Korg Monopoly for a drum machine, a Korg micro sampler for the sampler, as well as many other electronic equipment. The two conceived the score mainly from cut and paste digital tones on their synthesizers and filters to underline an 80s accent for the show. The Duffer Brothers allowed the composers freedom to experiment with the tone and texture for the themes. With a title card that's adorned in a glowing neon red, enveloped with a backdrop of pure darkness, and cued with a sinuous arpeggio melody, it's hard not to see the empathized theme of the entire series. The main melody is obviously the most enduring track in the show, as it's also the most important. When we look at a show's central motif, the path of the show always roots back to the core theme, with the assistance of an element that the show supplies. Stranger Things has a few elements that embrace the structure of the show, the time era, a horror facet, and the show's opening theme music. Going back to examine the main title sequence, the music presents a pattern that streams back and forth. The song is in a looping arpeggio, or in other words, a broken chord that is deconstructed into individual notes, played in succession. This arpeggio continuously descends and reascends with the C major chord for the whole sequence. This arrangement can be considered to be the many faces of Hawkins, Indiana, including the upside down. 
the spiral melody in this opening track can easily represent the connection between reality and a Demogorgon sanctuary. The Upside Down depicts the malevolent version of the human world. The atmosphere of these two regions are continuously conflicting. It's possible that the arpeggio is presenting a never-ending connection between these realities in the series. The Demogorgons will always haunt Will, and Will will always have some foreign monster inside of him. One thing Kyle and Michael wanted to do with the score is to give events in the show a thematic effect, or in other words, setting the mood in any given situation. If a scene is either cryptic or revolves around passion between characters, they would imitate that emotion in music. But what makes this distinguishing is that these emotions composed into the music are personalized for one situation. This means that the leitmotifs, or themes, used in one episode or clip wouldn't be salvaged to be used again. All themes are written from scratch with the central theme of the show in mind. Both composers looked at the prominent score of David Lynch's Twin Peaks for insight on musical backdrop. Whether the music of the show was covering a simple theme in a diner with minor characters or highlighting the discovery of a dead body, Twin Peaks has such a notable score. Composer Angelo Badalamenti encircled most of the show with his composition, and Dixon and Stein wanted to deliver a similar aspect in Stranger Things. When it came to reviving the Stranger Things score for the second season, the composition revisited old themes, while introducing new techniques that highlights the show's drive in horror and suspense. Kyle and Michael brought in a piano and the unhinged waterphone acoustic instrument to resonate an eerie tone. Besides new instruments and motifs for fresh characters, the composers kept the mood from season 1 consistent afterwards. Before we conclude the episode, don't forget to subscribe. Based on your interest for Twin Peaks, I'll be analyzing similar titles in the future such as Drive, E.T., and The Twilight Zone. You can also see my past episodes where I cover the popular TV shows Game of Thrones and Twin Peaks. If you want to request a movie, TV show, or video game for Score Uncovered, let me know here on YouTube or on my Twitter page. Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein's score on Stranger Things is the token of a supernatural 80s ambience. Since the heart of the series revolves around pain, resistance, innocence, and maturing, the music of the series additionally focuses these themes by fixating on character leitmotifs. Stranger Things highlights the character's struggle and emotion to pass the story further, and the parallel music associates these themes of conflict between other characters and situations. Over time, the audience ultimately recognizes the music's demeanor. Whether the scene involves romance, mystery, or fear, the motif of the show keeps us intact. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Score Uncovered. Now that we are digging deeper in the series, I'm getting a better understanding of how to approach these titles. There are many more titles to work on in the future, and I'm looking forward to see what more you guys want to see next. Ending the episode here, once more, thank you greatly.